folks, it's Lauren here, and I am going to be swatching and testing out some olive green fountain pen inks for you today. I bought the olive green bestsellers sample set from GoulaPens.com because I really love green inks and I have bought a bunch and I don't really know if I've found the right olive green just yet. So I'm excited to try all of these out. It's a really good, not that expensive way to test out fountain pen inks. They send just a little bit. And then if I like any of them enough after I've had a chance to put them in my fountain pens and use them, I can buy a bottle then. So if you're looking for a green fountain pen ink, maybe this will help you find the one that's right for you. Today I'm going to be using a Moonman glass dip pen. And I was very nervous about starting to use a glass dip pen, but it takes so much effort and time to clean out fountain pens and switch the ink in fountain pens that I thought having a dip pen, at least for testing samples, would make a lot of sense. I don't really write with this very often just because it's a little bit annoying to use for long periods of time. Fountain pens are better suited for that, but for testing it's great. I have also cotton swabs here that I'm going to use and I wanted to show you the jar that I keep these in. It says, alas, earwax on it. It's from my favorite fan-made subscription box, Accio Box, and this was just one of the things I got in an Accio Box a long time ago. I thought it was really funny, so. I am also going to be, just because I can't see very many pens on one page in this swatch book, I don't really do them on the back just in case anything bleeds through, but I do have my Nanami Cafe note with some Tamale River paper. That's also the kind of paper that's in this book. And so I'm going to test them out. I'll just write a line of each of the inks on here, probably just the name of the ink. And that way I can compare them all on one page, side by side, as well as the more fancy swatch book. <laughs> I also have a green journal cover on this particular journal, so that tells you how much I love green. I am excited to open all of these up and try them out. So these are in no particular order. I'm starting off with the Sailor Ink Studio 370, and this one had a really beautiful, very subtle swab swatch there. I don't know what to call that in particular, but once I actually wrote with it with the dip pen, it has this really nice kind of grayish green tint to it. I think it's super beautiful. This turned out to be probably one of my favorites of the whole batch. I definitely see myself writing with this in the future for sure. I find that when I am picking out inks to buy, I choose lighter ones and then once I actually get it inked up in a pen and use it, I, I don't like writing with the lighter ones, at least for things that aren't just decorations. And I feel like this one has the vibe of a lighter ink and it writes lighter sometimes, but it is definitely readable on a page, at least on these kind of whiter papers, and I, th I think it's beautiful. I really, really ended up liking this green. And here's one of my favorite things about it. Once it dried, I got kind of a dark green outline in the areas where the ink pooled, and it looks really cool. It's pretty subtle. I don't know if I would describe it as a sheen. Does anybody know what you call that when an ink does that? It's really cool. Next up is Noodler's Army Green, and when I did the swab for this one, it started out kind of a very yellowish, bright green, but the more I did this, it kind of started to get a bit muddy and kind of brown, and as it dries, you'll see that a little bit later. I also always put the caps back on these sample vials because they spill so easily. They get knocked over all the time. <laughs> Now this ink had a really cool shading effect, especially when there was a ton of ink on the dip pen, and you can see it right here. It goes from being very dark, almost brown, to a very light yellowish green in some areas, depending on where the ink pooled, and I thought that that was really unique. I don't know if I have an ink up until now that does that in quite the way that it did right here. It only really happened when there was a ton ton of ink on the nibs, so if you're using maybe a really broad nib pen, you might get that effect. Otherwise, it just had kind of normal shading. By the time I moved over to the second notebook, I didn't have as much ink on the nib, and so it wrote completely differently over here. And I like it. It's not that I don't like it. It's just more of a brownish green with some yellow tones in it. It's not as much my style as the first one was, but I am glad that I tried it out. It's good to see, I think, these kinds of inks side by side because they are 
pretty different. And it's amazing that just the category of olive green can give you such a wide variety of colors. Like, look at just these two. They're so different. Really cool. I love doing this. And here begins my butchering of many pronunciations that you will experience within this video, the Roar and Klinger Alt Gold Grun ink. This one swatched like a very bright grassy green, not as yellow as the army green and not as gray as the Sailor Ink Studio 370, but I really like it. It had interesting shading as well and it did get darker in some areas and it also had that little outlining effect that the Sailor Ink earlier did. I like this one a whole lot. I think it's super nice. It is the lightest of the inks that I've tried out so far. I also wanted to note that as this dried, it definitely desaturated a bit. It is not as bright as it is appearing right now, but I think this one is super pretty. Once it dries and kind of mellows out a little bit, it's a very nice springtime green, a little bit more subtle than it's appearing on camera as it's wet. And I don't know, I like it. I feel like I'm gonna probably use this one a bunch as well. I am also really excited to hear which of these inks is your favorite in the comments below. Pretty much everybody can look at this list and probably pick a different option. So I'm really excited to see where the comment discussion goes. And I realized that I forgot to write the name of the color. So <laughs> I'm adding that on there. Luckily, I still had some ink on my nib. Writing with glass dip pens is always an adventure. I never seem to have <laughs> the right amount of ink, but I did here. If you wanna know more about the stamps that I use and this notebook, I made a video about my ink swatch book that you can watch here on my channel. And we're gonna move on to the next ink, which is the Platinum Forest Black. I would say that this one is pretty similar to the Sailor Ink Studio 370 ink that I did at the beginning of this video, but it is a little bit more saturated of a green. It's more in the blue direction than the gray direction, though it does feel pretty dry in the same way that the Sailor Ink Studio did, and it is really, really beautiful. I love this color green. You can see that even with a full nib here, the line is pretty fine, finer than some of the other inks. I would say that Noodler's Army Green was the wettest that I've used so far. I'm also getting just a tiny, tiny bit of that outlining effect with the dark edges that I got on the Sailor Ink Studio 370 and on the Roarer and Klingner, and I think that might be more pronounced if there were a broader nib, <laughs> if there were a little bit more ink to go around. I haven't quite been able to predict what the line width is going to be on this dip pen. It's a little bit inconsistent. I think it depends on how much ink is on the nib and how wet the ink itself is, and also, I think it's kind of fun to see like what kinds of scribbles people use on their different ink swatches. I watch a lot of videos about inks here on YouTube and they're pretty fun. Everybody has kind of their own way of doing it and this is mine. I have two different ways of doing it as I'm showing you in these two separate notebooks. I love the color on this one. It's so beautiful. And here you can also see kind of the similarities between the Platinum Forest Black and the Sailor Ink Studio 370, which are more obvious as it completely dried. You get more of a bluish green and also some interesting shading on the Platinum Forest Black. Just gonna rinse and dry off the pen here and then we can move on to the next one, which is the Monteverde Olivine. Now out of all of the inks, this is the one that I immediately wanted to ink up in a fountain pen. It is so just super wet, super juicy. Look at those lines. I just, especially compared to the Platinum Forest Black, which was really dry, I just, I love the way this one writes. And I I love like a medium nib, especially if it's super juicy like this. And so I feel like this ink would be perfect in maybe one of my fine nib pens so that it would actually probably thicken up that line a little bit. I'm still learning about the science of fountain pens, but my experience so far has been that certain inks make a, a thicker line than others and so I have some pens that I really love except the nib is just a little bit too fine and I'm probably going to use this ink in one of those just to see if it can save it a little bit for me. Now when I think of an olive green this is what I think of and it's just so saturated and dark and beautiful but it does have a little bit every once in a while where the lighter shading peeks out 
and it's not too close to brown. Sometimes I worry that army greens or olive greens end up like not reading as green at all because they were so brown, but I really, really like this particular green. It did dry a little bit more subtle like some of the other inks that I've pointed out to you, and I do have a clip at the end where they have all fully dried so that you can see them compared side by side. This one is definitely one of my favorites. Now it's time to test out the Robert Oster Crocodile Green, and I've had good luck with Robert Oster inks lately, so I'm excited to try this one out. It ended up being kind of in the same color family as the previous two, maybe a touch more yellow than the Platinum Forest Black, but pretty similar to that one otherwise. It wasn't as wet as the Monteverde Olivine, and it, I would say, is a pretty classic olive green, but on the lighter end of the scale from the Monteverde Olivine. I'm getting a tiny bit of very subtle shading as this is drying. It's more of like a really subtle gradient kind of just at the end of the word or the beginning of the word wherever the ink happens to be pooling. It's not jumping out as one of my favorites but I do really like it and I am excited to see how it behaves when it's inked up in a fountain pen. Next we have another sailor ink, the Sailor Shikiori Waka Uguisu, and this is by far the brightest of the inks here. I don't even know if I would necessarily call it an olive green, but I am nonetheless glad that it's part of this set because I did need an ink that's kind of this brighter green color, especially in the springtime. I love light greens, and so I was excited to try this one out. This one had some really cool shading and it also had the darker outlines in some areas where the ink pulled, similar to the Sailor Ink Studio 370. And I really like it. I'm definitely going to end up using this one and it is pretty different from the rest of them. I would say out of all of the inks that I've tried out today, it's the most similar to the Rohrer and Klingner Alt Gold Grun, but it is a more saturated, brighter green, and it did dry a little bit more subtle like the rest of them on here, but stayed pretty light. Look at that outline! So cool when it does that. I just wanted to show you since I am about to turn the page here that the Monteverde Olivine is the one that came the closest to actually leaking through the page. This is Tomoe River paper, and the rest of them did pretty well on that front. I've got one more ink in this set to show you, and this is another Sailor Shikiori ink. This one's called the Tokiwamatsu, and I have a little surprise for you. This one is pretty unique, as the rest of the inks in the set go. I was kind of already in love just at the swatch, but as I continued to write with it and it started to dry, I liked it more and more. <laughs> The name's a bit of a mouthful, um, but color names are always so interesting, so if you know what the non-English color names of these inks mean, let me know in the comments. I would say that this one is just as dark and saturated as the Monteverde Olivine, but it is a bluer ink, whereas the Monteverde Olivine was kind of more in the yellow direction. Uh, the colors though, the differences on some of these are really subtle and I, it's just because I'm a graphic designer and I, I think about like how much blue and how much yellow go into each individual green. Um, so <laughs> hopefully that was helpful. I know that sometimes looking at lots of inks like this can really the best way to look at them is to look at them all side by side and decide for yourself, but hopefully between the visual and hearing me describe these colors uh, as someone who can look and see them up close is helpful to you if you are shopping for an olive green ink and trying to decide which one is best for you. This one already seemed like it was going to be one of my favorites and then I <laughs> noticed something really fun about the ink that had dried in my swatch book and that is that there is a gorgeous shiny red sheen on this ink. Look at that! How much fun is that? <laughs> and here are all of the inks all together fully dried just so you can see side by side what they look like. I can't wait to hear in the comments below which ones are your favorite, and if you actually own any of these inks and have used them before in a fountain pen, tell me how they write. What's your experience of them? Because I'm really excited to try them out. If you would like me to ink up a fountain pen with one of these inks in particular and do an actual writing sample and a journaling page, let me know which one you're most excited to see. 
I do have a few more ink sample sets from Goulet pens in other colors, so if you would like me to make more videos in this style, let me know. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one, and I'll see you next time.